Marbles. Why were these things everywhere? They would come in sacks or pouches. They came in mazes. I'm sure you played this. Yeah, you probably played this as a kid at your uncle's house for one of the best birthdays you ever had. But you probably forgot about it from all the smoke inhalation. But don't worry, just because you forgot the party doesn't mean you forgot the gift. If you ever owned one of these things, you were definitely one of the coolest kids on the block. I guarantee you remember your parents yelling at you when you would ask them for new batteries all the time. Why do we need so many? Just so you could play with a little freaking marble. Why did everything in the 80s need like 10 C batteries with mustard? Is it pinball we're playing or are we a backup for NASA's Mission Control Center? Do you remember these magazines? The Sears Wish Book? Or the JCPenney Christmas Book? Any kid that looked through these catalogs knew that they had to get the old pen out and circle the hundreds of toys that they were lucky to get one of. Honestly, I feel like just spending an evening looking at all of the fun stuff in here was really a gift all on its own. Hello there, greasy McDonald's baby. Oh yeah, look at that, they have Teletubbies too. Hey there, Tinky Winky. You see now, when I was a kid, I was looking through the catalog one holiday season and I wanted something like this. That's right. I wanted to play with marbles for hours. I can remember wanting that toy so badly, but my parents never got it for me. I mean, it's not like I was going to do anything too crazy with them. They're just marbles. Off of the drop, Red Eye in the draft. They both move to the inside. Red Eye shoulders aside and did the move get completed. The real story begins with a great idea that took place in the 80s, 1984. The game was called Marble Madness, and it was still in early development. According to this document, the player tries to get his marble to the goal before the opposing team can get their steely through the goal. He is up against a computer-controlled Steely, which is his beginner-rated opponent. In the finished product, on the arcade, you only race against your own time or another player while avoiding obstacles and other enemies. So, there are some differences in this document. Some of the things that were original ideas never made it, such as the elastic barricade, the ice block, gravitational funnel, the rat trap, teeter-totter, and grid guardians. Some of these original designs are just amazing. There was also the wizard's column and the bubble blowers. Have you ever played Bubble Ghost? Maybe another time. Coming up, a look at your local radar. But first, the current local conditions. Ah, oh, this is nice. So, Marble Madness was released in 1984 by Atari. And here's what the arcade cabinet actually looked like. The game was controlled by a trackball, which you and another player could use to roll your marbles down towards the goal, as you saw earlier. The trackball was a unique design that made playing a game by feel a true testament to this era's magnificence. In 
in this game you can die a million times as long as your timer doesn't reach zero. So let's continue to take a look at the original arcade version. So Marble Madness is a very short game. You can beat it in close to around 5 minutes. Even though the game is short, I still feel like it has a lot of replay value. You may have noticed that this game has a pretty abstract art style as well. One thing that's cool about this level is that you can run over miniature versions of the enemies in this little arena for a chance to add a few seconds to your overall time. The final stage is a true masterpiece. Did you ever think once in your life you'd be staring at a screen, watching a marble roll around in space? Towards the very end, things can get a little bit hectic. There are moving platforms, and if this is your first time getting this far, you're probably almost out of time. But just try to stay calm and get your freaking marble across the moving platforms carefully. And before you know it, you made it. So now that we're familiar with the game, let's take a look at some of the other versions that came out. When you're ready for a real challenge, you're ready for Marble Madness. There are deadly steelies, marble munchers, acid pools, digital waves, vacuum cleaners, catapults, pistons, pounding hammers, killer birds, and they're all after you. Do you have what it takes to reach the silly maze where everything's upside down? Or the ultimate maze where even the maze moves? Do you have what it takes or will Marble Madness make you lose your marbles? Marble Madness! The Nintendo NES version was very unique. It was actually developed by a company called Rare. Rare made games like Battletoads and Iron Sword. I feel like the ball in this version feels a bit heavier. It definitely drives like a school bus full of frogs compared to the arcade. But the game has everything to offer. It's two player, it looks good, and the music was adapted from the arcade version by David Wise. Oh, what the hell? This song sounds like crap. Oh, wait a minute. This song always sounded like crap. But one thing that's the opposite of crap is this nice illustration that's inside of the manual. It tells you about the steely and how you can get extra points if you knock it off of the level. Totally useless. I wish the manual had something to say about these freaking hammers. I can't stand these things. The final stage still looks good. You're still a marble. You're still in space. You're still getting killed by acid pits. And your heart rate is still at a questionable rate as you painfully steer across this bridge area. I do have to say, it is pretty cool to see an arcade game like this make it to the NES. And after all, this game really is a fair challenge. The Sega Genesis version is a very solid port of the game. The ball feels much more responsive, kinda like it does in the arcade game. The music is good, the graphics look like the arcade version, and there are separate difficulties you can choose from in the beginning. I don't think they change much besides the amount of time you're given, but definitely a nice touch either way. The final stage, still beautiful by the way, had some psychedelic blue floors, whereas the arcade version had flashing yellow floors. Very trippy. Towards the end of this level, the game has some slowdown. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, because to me, it's like the game is getting so crazy that you go into a matrix zone where everything... The Game Boy version is a very cute attempt. 
The ball is like a feather foot and it rips along very quickly. Oh, look at that! They even put the wave part in there. Well, that's cool. Now let's see how the vacuums are doing. Stupid vacuum! But you know what? It reminds me of something. Remember flipping through your old TV channels? It sounds almost the same. Channel 1. Channel 2. Channel 3. hunting for cougars is very essential. <laughs> but seriously, check out how ridiculous these moving cylinders can be. They are so obnoxious. How does that sound? Does that sound annoying yet? I was a little bit disappointed to see that in the silly maze, you don't get to run over enemies. Instead, you just get this jumbo-sized macaroni elbow. Look at it. So silly. One other difference is that in the arcade version, you have this one area of the silly race that has these freaking birds. The NES version has it, and so does the Sega version, but the Game Boy version? More of this. Macaroni pictures. Even after you get to the end of the stage, you're hoping to see the last level, the ultimate race, but the game just skips it and loops. Hey, at least if you have a link cable, you can play two player with a friend, or just play the one for the Game Boy Color. It has some cool startup screens, it looks pleasant, it has the miniature arena, it has the birds. And it even has the final stage. Wow, this game must be the perfect handheld version. All of that would be true, except there is one big problem. The game is so difficult. As if the game wasn't already hard enough. Now you have a timer that counts down faster. The marble controls like a fish out of water. And the collisions. I mean, what the heck is happening right here? Look at this. I can't even get past this. There we go. Okay. And I'm being serious too. This timer runs down so fast. I actually had to pause the game and use the infinite time cheat just to be able to get to the end. If you have ever made it here without using any cheats, you deserve some serious props. Marble Madness for the Game Gear. Wow. What better use can six AA batteries give you than this handheld masterpiece? This version has all the important parts. But this time the waves are stationary. I mean, I guess that's cool. Maybe the programmers just had some trouble and just said, hey, at least they can roll over something fun. This version has eight difficulties to choose from. It has the arena where you murder small enemies. Shout out Massey. It has the birds and the final stage. If you're looking for the best handheld version of Marble Madness, I think this is the one to play. So have you ever seen the magic wand? In the arcade version, and in other versions, the game randomly checks for this event to happen. The wand magically adds more seconds to your overall time, which is very cool. Which was the world's first electronic cougar? My god, was she beautiful and in her mid-40s. Furthermore, on the Apple II and Commodore 64 personal computer, there was a game called Marble Madness that had a secret level? A water level.
Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to see is a beautiful dance performed by two marbles. Thank you for watching. 